You are listening to the postcast presented by the Locked On Senators podcast following a hockey game. Yes, the Ottawa Senators fall 3-0 in a suffocating defeat to the New York Islanders. I'm Ross Levitan. With me, as always, is Brandon Piller. We've got Laleem's Martian here and a very special guest whose introduction I would never even think about writing down. How dare I? He's covered the World Series where he got hit with a foul ball. He's covered National for Sportsnet, Radio for TSN, and now he's the head senior writer of the Athletic Ottawa branch. You can find him on the Locked On NHL podcast. It's Ian Mendez. Welcome, buddy. We really appreciate you jumping on with us. It's been a long time coming, and what a game to polish up, hey? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Uh, this is still better than the 5-1 game on Saturday, isn't it? Ask Pilsy. Oh, you don't have to tell yeah. me. Ian, I drove all the way to be at that game. Can you imagine? Seven hours of driving just to watch that performance. Uh, yeah. Hey, but listen, the reason why, and, and I love, I, you guys know, I love you guys. I love coming on with uh, with this crew. But I wanted to rock my Dallas Cowboys hat tonight oh. because – I want people to understand, like, I am a sports fan, and I understand suffering, and I understand what it's like to watch your favorite team uh, just make a whole bunch of mistakes, and you think, like, you're so – look, I'm passionate about the Dallas Cowboys, uh, so I, I just – people need to know that I, I'm a sports fan, so I get it. I, I understand what it's like watching the Ottawa Senators right now. What was the biggest heartbreak as a Dallas Cowboys fan? Take me in. Open the wound. Uh, probably the year where Tony Romo fumbled the ball against Seattle. I want to say that was 06, 2006. And it's an extra, extra point. And I'm thinking, like, it's in the bag. And that one, that one hurt. That one, and that was 15 years ago, 16 years ago. All right, well, let's get back to how we start each and every postcast. And that's Pilsy's immediate reaction. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to really break this down in a positive way for the Sens. But, I mean, hey, I thought newcomer Matthew Joseph looked pretty good in his couple shifts. You can really notice the speed there. And uh, they mentioned it on the broadcast. I like how when he did take that massive hit. Yeah, I was going to mention Jerry Jones and Eugene Mel, like two di very different uh, owners there. But <laughs> when he did take that hit, the first thing he does is, okay, no whistle. Let me get back into that play. He scoops up the loose puck. Heads up play, good hockey IQ like we talked about, and he hits Tierney for a breakaway. So I was happy to see that. It would have been nice if Tierney could have scored that goal because no one stood up for uh, Joseph on that hit. But if you score the goal, then you say, hey, we got you back at least. But it was a good play by Joseph, and I thought I liked what I saw from him so far. Martian, your immediate reaction to Joseph's game and anything else you saw tonight? Yeah, I mean, I was just going to go to that play in particular there. It reminded me a lot of that, that was a Buffalo, Buffalo game, oh, Buffalo yeah. game but we were on the other end of it. But, um, of course, you know you know how I feel sometimes when Chris Tierney gets those prime A uh, offensive chances. He's not always he's not, not always the, the first choice, I think, uh, for me going in there. But, uh, yeah, definitely a, a really nice play by Matthew Joseph there. And I was impressed. Uh, by him just in general uh, tonight you know it was kind of as advertised with him right the speed was definitely showing the tenacity on the puck uh, the quick transitions and uh, I think uh, you know the offense obviously wasn't there tonight but um, Joseph I think uh, created a lot despite all that yeah Ian I want to get your take not only on Joseph but after two periods it's tied 0-0 do you credit more the Senators for, you know, battling in a low scoring game against a team that's known to play that style. Or is this more on the Islanders who maybe didn't have it either at the start for the first 40 minutes? That second period was atrocious, wasn't it? Like, I felt like it was unwatchable. So uh, boring. It was bad. Yeah, as a guy who's clipping the games and I'm watching and waiting for something to happen, there was nothing to clip. <laughs> nothing. I, I was near burning gigabytes just like all my memory, you know, trying to wait for something to happen and, and nothing was going on. It was it was actually wild. Uh, yeah, the, the clips were endless. Yeah, exactly. That, that second period, there wasn't much going on. I like. Listen, I, I think you got to give Matthew Joseph three, four, five games, get acclimated with line mates, teammates. It's 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 all new for him, but he was noticeable, right? And and I think that's a that's a good thing. Although, I, like to me, it's interesting. Like you always got to give it some time. Like remember when Clark Bishop first came in, and we were like, "Who's this guy?" Like like sometimes when a new player comes in, we're just so enamored with him because he looks different he skates different he's just different and and you know we don't know any any anything else about him so 
I'm always just hesitant. Give it a few games. Let the players settle in. Let us get acclimated to him. But I've always liked him. I've always thought he's got some some wheels. The guy I really liked tonight was MDZ. Like, yes. I got to be honest with you. I didn't know what to expect. Guy hasn't played since whatever it was, like end of November. And very first sequence of the game had a scoring chance. He uh, helped set up a uh, – uh, he broke up a play at his own blue line, turned the puck over. They, they went up the other uh, end of the ice. And I thought, you know what? Like, how could this guy have been any worse than some of the, the, the things that we've seen this year? So I, I've always been a guy that I've I got a pretty good relationship with Mike um, uh, in terms of just, you know, being able to find out where his head is at. And where I, I never thought, you asked me a week ago, will Michael Del Zotto ever play for Ottawa again? I'd have been like, no way, ain't happening. So I was kind of happy to see him. I thought, he, I thought he looked pretty good and had at least one, if not two, pretty good chances to score. What do you think the main reason could have been why they changed their mind, let alone the reason why he was down there? But why do you think they're like, okay, you know what? Come play the last 19, 20 games with us. Yeah, it's, you, you know what? And so, but we got to be careful because I don't know that, like, are we sure that he's going to be here two weeks from now? Like, yeah, when Hamannick's uh, here, does well, that yeah, just Hamannick automatically comes back send and him down? Comes back, yeah. It's fair. Exactly. Hamannick, um, you know, Sanderson Shabbat, potentially. Yeah. Shabbat potentially like the odds of MDZ finish. Wait, is it MDZ or MDZ? I'm an MDZ Whoa. guy. What is it? You yeah, say MDZ. Z. I say Z. As yeah. the president of the MDZ fan club, I say Z. So <laughs> okay. free, free MDZ fan club. Yeah, yeah, MDZ. But I, I you know, I, I, I look ahead to next year though, and uh, I'm not sure. Do you guys see Michael Delzato part of the mix next year? I don't, but. You know, at least he's if he gets some games up here, maybe you can find a place for him in the summer where you you're offloading him and you eat some salary or you buy him out or something. Right. Or maybe you get a third round pick in return. That seems to be the price for a guy like that. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> I agree. Martian, you want to hop into our Cent Central standouts tonight? Yeah, sure. And and we just touched on my guy. Obviously, I, I'm going to have to go with, with MDZ after advocating heavily for them to finally bring him up and, and get him out of Belleville. And I think that he's obviously deserving of this chance after his play down there. And I think he, he came as, as advertised as well. He's exactly what you wanted. He came in with Spark. Um, you know, jumping back into the lineup after coming up from Belleville, I know he's he's got you know, tons of NHL experience. He led the team uh, tonight in NHL experience, obviously. So um, for him to come in and, and after a, a stint in Belleville, there's still going to be a nerves, I think, probably for a guy who's still trying to, you know, trying to cut his own chops and say, you know, I can still play in this league and I know I deserve in this uh, deserve to play in this league. And I think he played like, like that tonight. And I think he had something to prove. And I think he, I mean, it's only one game, but I think, you know, mission accomplished. He proved it. I, I know I think he took a minus at one point in the game there. So what? You know what? I don't think anybody had like a particularly great game uh, back on the back end. So um, he he stood out for me for sure. Nikita Zaitsev, the only even defenseman. All five others uh, dash with Branch from the only dash too. Pilsy, what do you got? And it's going to be tough to beat the beer vendor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, just shout out again to that beer vendor in Montreal. Great job there. But my central, central standout for tonight's game is going to be Tim Stutzla. I thought he was all over the ice. He had the puck on his stick a lot of the time. He was making great plays. His dekes inside the offensive zone, I think he set up Michael Delzato for a nice point shot. And I thought it was interesting, finally, uh, did you guys have Tim Stutzla on the penalty kill on your bingo card for tonight? Because that was a rare one. And DJ Smith showing a lot of trust and giving him responsibility on the PK, which is rare in itself, but also taking a defensive zone draw when you're down a man. And Timmy ended up winning that draw too. So I thought that was an impressive showing for Timmy. And it shows that DJ Smith is like, hey, we're at a point where let's just experiment Timmy needs to have uh, more experience in the faceoff dot. Why not throw him into these situations? So I was really impressed with that and thought if he shoots the puck a little bit more often, he can create a little more offense, but he was looking good tonight. Ian, we'll let you go. I'm not going to leave you with the bare bones at the end of the, the road here. So what do you have? Here? <laughs> so th so this is my uh, Send Central performer of the night, or what's it called again? The Send Central standout. It's not quite yeah. the level of Send Central. 
stocks that we you know Adelim's Martian has yeah. unlocked there, but we like to just snap it around after the game and give a few shout outs. Okay, so I mean, I, I feel like I already did Delzato, right? So I, I can't go back down there. Uh, Pillsy there already took uh, Tim Timmy. Timmy. Uh, can I go, Nick Paul? Can I go to another game? <laughs> that was a great reaction great when Connor really. Brown was told, eh? Wasn't that great? Like, awesome. when you see Connor Brown, Gord Miller tells him, and you see Connor Brown, like, oh, way to go, Polly. Like, yeah, that was awesome. That was because it, like, it, it, like, that that interview, it took me, it took us on a journey, didn't it? Like, the first answer looked like he was going to cry, and then yeah. the second answer looked like he was so happy for the guy. And And I think, to me, like, Nick is such a good guy. Like, this is actually a good trade. Like, I think Ottawa fans are going to like Matthew Joseph. I yeah. think uh, this is going to be a win-win scenario, and I hope Nick goes there and he, he gets a great chance to to win a Stanley Cup. But I just love tonight in watching the game and seeing my phone when I was hitting refresh, and you see the highlight. To me, I love that. I love I, I you know I love seeing Nick Paul go to to Tampa and score a goal tonight. So he's my he's my guy here. All right, I like that. That's Fair good. Enough. He's going to be. We do sends our abroad, ha- Central hashtag now. sends abroad throughout the playoffs, and That's it right. all started when we, when we were getting a little bit of traction, and we were trying to get ahead during the pandemic. We literally, because they had the expanded playoffs, made a team of four lines, six defensemen, and I think we had three or four goalies uh, in the mix too. So it was a full lineup, and I feel like the the top scorers that we put out there, they were all at the top of their teams. Even the guys who only lasted the playing round, like Meek, I think had four points in three games or something. But that's neither here nor there. Although it does feel like every night there's one or two on the other team. Tonight it was Pajot and Zdeno Chera, who <laughs> Martian said too soon on the sends abroad for Nick Paul. Well, I'm still not over Zdeno Chera, and it's been. I mean, what, 16 years since he left. He's, uh, I think, both of Martian and I's favorite player back in the day growing up. I mean, how could it not be? What a legend. First ballot Hall of Famer. But I like that, snapping it over to the game. So we have Islanders 3, Nick Paul 1, and the Ottawa Senators 0 tonight. <laughs> Mendez, while we have you here, we got to get some reaction. I know you're on Wally and Mathot this morning. That was, uh, yeah. that was great stuff, as always. And you wrote your piece, The Athletic, about the Senators' trade deadline. But I want to ask you more, not about what happened, but let's turn the page to what's next. What are you hoping to see the Sens accomplish this offseason? Well, listen, and I, th- I think what's great about this is that it doesn't take uh, a lot of uh, imagining what they need to do, right? It doesn't take a lot of imagination. They told us what they need. They, he, Pierre Dorian said to us, uh, it's no secret, we need a top four defenseman and a top six forward. And I don't think Travis Hamannick fits the bill of the top four. I don't know that they think that. Anyway, but I still think they need somebody else in the back end and they need a top six forward, right? So to me, it's a pretty easy, like, if you're going to prioritize the offseason, to me, number one is sign Josh Norris. Like, don't let this drag into like training camp where then suddenly you guys are running polls where you're like, will he be <laughs> here on, on, you know, pick the date that he's going to be here o- opening day of training camp, first preseason game. Like we don't need that. What we need Josh Norris back in camp, ready to go. So that would be priority one for me. And then, and then make it work with, uh, make it work with finding a top six forward and a top four D that's it. Right. Like that there, there's literally nothing else you need to do. And they just go get those things. Nothing else. Just go get those two things. Yeah, I think I'll add that I think they need to be veteran guys, of course, right, too, who are like proven guys who have been doing it for, for years and years here uh, in the NHL because those are the guys who, you know, the team will grow around sort of, uh, so to speak, right? So that's, I agree with you, Ian. I think uh, they're just a couple pieces away here maybe, um, but there's de- definitely some glaring needs uh, at the moment. How do you feel about the goaltending, Ian? You mentioned that's it. That's all they have to do. So you got $10 million wrapped up in Murray, Forsberg, and Gustafson. Are you confident that any combination of the two of those three can make it to the playoffs? And if they do make it to the playoffs, be successful? So here, now, now I feel like I want to do the Jim Mora p- playoffs. Play- playoffs? <laughs> yeah. playoffs? Is that good? Fair. Is that a good Jim Mora? Playoffs? Yeah, I thought so. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. We got questions. Okay, you 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 guys, you tell me. Am I being fair here? We have questions about who's in their top six, correct? We have questions about their top four on D. Yeah, couple. And we <laughs> yeah. have questions about their goaltending. Yeah, two. Okay. 
other than that, we're feeling good, right? Like, like <laughs> literally the whole roster. We have questions about the whole roster. So I, to me, I get a little hesitant when I hear people saying, yeah, you know what? We're going to be a playoff team. Like, we can't say they're going to be a playoff team until we get to, like, January of next year and they're in the race. Like, to me – but but I don't also want to dampen the enthusiasm because this fan base – need some enthusiasm you need some positivity it can't all be doom and gloom but we need to take a realistic approach that this team has legitimate questions here on the 22nd of march with their top six forwards with their top 4d and their goaltending and for me to sit here on this platform and tell you it's all going to be okay that they're going to be a platform i can't tell you that but but if i had to rank like now here because this is the better question now, those if those are the three issues, what's the what's the number one issue for you? Because I kind of feel like goaltending's three for me on that list. And that sorting out the D is one, getting the other forward is two, and goaltending is three. But I'm open to to hearing if you guys think that, that that needs to be stacked in a different way. I'm gonna go a different way. Like what do you, what do you feel like like if you look at the expansion Ottawa Senators and you look at, at the current Ottawa Senators, I feel like they, they do sort of run a little bit parallel to each other. Where do you think in relation to that the current senators kind of are? Because to me, I see them as late nineties right now. And they didn't really start like making the playoffs and winning until you know those early two thousands years where they were like consistently being able to do it. Do you kind of see it the same way? Like where where do you where do you kind of think that they're they're at right now as far as like growth? Are they like a trade away, two trades away, three pieces? We I mean we talked about all those three different positions, but um, I mean where do you kind of see that in relation to like or, like if you can put it back to a timeline? Oh, so like are we saying that the, like like are we past Dave Allison or are we still in the Dave Allison era? Like I think we I, oh I see I was pretty young at that point, but I think. We're past Dave Allison. I think okay. we're, we're like right around like about to trade the Ashen days. Well, that's where well, I think. So I after the holdout, the Ashen, they were they, they were, were like a, a playoff team at that point. Like, like I think we are. They have like. This are they still at the Civic Center, Mendez? They are in that that <laughs> little window. Did Jacques Martin coach them for like two weeks at the Civic Center? Ooh, that's I that's above did, my pay grade. Right? Because because Jacques coached them at the at the Palladium the first game right. They are Jacques Martin at the Civic Center. There's like a, <laughs> okay. Uh, there's like a week. <laughs> That's what we needed to hear. <laughs> That's where they're at. You can see it. It's coming. But a bunch of things have to like like for Ottawa for, to go from where they were in 95, 96, to 96, 97. They got consistent goaltending from Tugdown and Rhodes, right? Uh, Wade Redden really kind of came in, and, and Chris Phillips, and they all kind of started yeah. to like. They started to see that that core, that younger core, start. Yeah, exactly. evolving, Right, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that they are ninety five, ninety six, Ottawa Senators. Uh, they're like they're the they're like January the tenth, nineteen ninety six. That's I'm gonna even give you a specific date. That's so where they are. January tenth. Po- the Palladium opened on in January of yeah, of ninety like seventeenth. I want to say yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so the week before, yeah, uh, January fifteenth, Timmy's oh, birthday. Fifteenth, yeah. <laughs> so that means yeah, John Martin took over at the start of that season. So I mean that means we're we're close. No, I think I think Jacques took over in like late December, right, that year because they they started oh, with Rick Bonus. Yeah. Then they went to the twenty five games of Dave Allison, and then they went to Jacques. It was like the three. The three coaches in one year. Yeah, I see it. You're right. Yeah. That's wild. That was the year that uh, Daniel Alfredson finished uh, first and won the uh, Calder Trophy. So not quite a parallel, but I mean, Josh Norris got close last season. I think he was fourth in voting. Fourth, Uh, yeah. He was. He was fourth. You know, okay, can I slide a quick story? story Because I want to focus less on this terrible game between the Senators (laughs) and the Islanders. And I want to tell you that uh, in 1995-96, I was a journalism student at uh, at Carleton. And for a class assignment, I interviewed Daniel Alfredson. No way. Yeah. Wow. That's the first time. And I've told nice. him about it after. And he's like, he had no recollection. Of it. <laughs> and, but this story is so old. It involved me taking a bus to the KRC. Okay. Taking OC transport to the KRC. And then writing, interviewing Daniel Alfredson. 
and then producing that off a dot matrix printer. <laughs> wow. You guys I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. That's what I love. <laughs> you guys are like, I don't know what a dot matrix. Somebody, like, look, I'm the same age as Zidane Chara. <laughs> So anybody that's gonna, in this, I was actually going to bring that up. Like I was, I was actually thinking about that. I'm like, I, I didn't really know exactly what age you were in. So I was like, is is do the Islanders have a player who are older than Ian? <laughs> oh man, I'm hanging out. Like when Tom Brady said he was coming back, I was like, yes, because yeah. Tom Brady and Zidane Chara are still in your Allen. prime. We're that's all the awesome. same age. Hey, I mean, yeah, there's players playing in, in both those professional leagues that are the same age as you. That's a beautiful thing. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, speaking of interviews where the, the person being interviewed doesn't remember and pigeon tosses you. Actually, no, I shouldn't say pigeon toss, but out of yeah. your memory bank and never remembers. Yeah. Me interviewing Ian my first year at CSM. Nice guy. Answers the email right away. I'm so brutal on this call. It's in the early tapes. We put it in to one of the Making Sense of the Sends episodes. Oh, my God. If we could hear that back now, Ian. It was a struggle for me. My first question to you was how you were at like a gala the night before. So I was like, how was it? Did you meet anyone cool? Like, sick, <laughs> sick question, dude. <laughs> it was so bad. Somebody has to find the lost tapes. Of oh, that we can find that. That would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. David yeah. Lannis probably has it somewhere at, uh, at CSM for sure. That's uh, that's hilarious. But amazing. no, man, that's awesome. We really appreciate having you. And I want to get one last one in. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if the boys do too. That's our trick of the trade when we have an interview. I say, oh, final question. <laughs> And then Pilsy goes, final question for me. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. So we get to Don't double barrel, so. double barrel action. Oh, Who has know, been yeah. the biggest rising star on TSN hockey coverage? Is it Cheryl Pounder or Mark Mathot? Hot takes only on a late night edition of the post. Some recency bias, maybe okay. just going on Mark's show, though. Yeah, fair. Ooh, yeah, but point. Cheryl was killing it yesterday True. in trade deadline day. Yeah. So. Biggest riser on TSN as a young star. Give me some Haley Salvian. Oh, nice. third there option. Of course, you know what? I, I I think the world uh, of Haley. Uh, she's so talented. Uh, I I really am disappointed that she's no longer. I know people think, hey, hey, man, didn't you punt her out of this market? <laughs> no, it didn't happen that way. Uh, and I love I love Haley to death. I love doing the podcast with her. Um, yeah, she would be like sneaky my 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 off the board uh, pick. But a lot I of people think, are saying you ran her out of town, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I ran her out. I ran her out, and now, now I gotta just uh, pump her tires whenever I can. But you know what, Cheryl Pounder, I think in like, like the the problem with Mark Mathot is he's so natural, it bugs me. Like mm-hmm. I went yeah, to four, and, and I'm sure what you guys feel the same way. Like when you go to broadcasting school, and you do, you know you do all these things, and you do all this uh, prep work or whatever. And, you know, you're nervous and you go to do it. And, you know, for me, it took four years of journalism school and then years after that to, like, really got comfortable. You see this guy just rolling in in his tight-fitting suit. And he's so good. Like, <laughs> it, it bothers me that he's that good. Like, yeah, he's supposed, to, he's supposed to be this jock, right? And yeah. he comes in and he's, like, super smart and he sees everything and he plays the game. It's like, what what's going on? Yeah. Like, why, oh, why is yeah. he able to do this so well? Exactly. But yeah, I feel the meth, same way. Meth is dynamite. But I got to tell you, I think Cheryl Pounder, what I think I really appreciate about Cheryl is her focus on the defense is what I really appreciate, right? And I know you guys are a goalie-friendly show, so sometimes you focus on the goalies. And, you know, when you listen to Mike Johnson, sometimes he's focused on the forwards. I don't know that we have enough former, like, analysts in the game that are defense, that play defense and understand defense as a position. I know Mark Mathot, obviously, is, is a defenseman. But – I really think Cheryl Pounder has been great. And I, I loved Cheryl's work at the Olympics. I thought it was top notch. I think we're really privileged to have like that TSN, honestly, like, let me just like, I don't know if people understand how fortunate you are in this market to have that caliber of talent on your, um, your local broadcast. Like it's, it's national quality for a regional yeah. broadcast. And we're really fortunate there. I love Carlo Koliakovo. I'd say this to his face, but he would much be rather doing Leafs games than Sense no, games. For sure. He, <laughs> he only brought him in today because Del Zotto was playing. I yeah, think. yeah, <laughs> his buddy, for sure. Boys, uh, you got anything for for Ian? I was just a little more rattled that Ian got an intro and I didn't even get one until we were like, you're always minutes. recurring guests. I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how <laughs> how thick can I pump yeah, your We intro Ian and everything got thrown off for a loop. I, I, no one even knew it was here. 
<laughs> oh, no. I'm just I'm gonna miss with that hair. I gotta do it. I know. Producing's tough, man. You know, I gotta be on my game. Pilsy, you got anything, or should we let the legend leave us after a very kind half hour with the fellows? Hey, Ian, it's been a whole, it's been a blast getting to chat with you and oh, yeah. talk about spicing up a game that needed just that. Oh. It's been, uh, it's been a ton of fun. Yeah, listen, guys, thanks for thanks for having me, and listen, I'd love to come back and join you either for a postcast or another pod or something down the road. And uh, yeah, listen, uh, have a great night, and thanks uh, thanks so much for having me. Well, you're already RSVP. You're coming to. We're gonna see you at that game, yes, April, April 23rd. I, I did. Is, is there a plan? Like, uh, have we're you, in the early stages. Plans in place. Yet, yeah. yeah, we're Not getting yet. the wheels greased. Up. We are at the Jacques Martin at the Civic Center <laughs> in planning <laughs> yeah. this. I want this to be really weird, where we're like, like we all end up at the Swiss Chalet on Terry Fox. I've heard worse ideas. Yeah, that, that's you know what, what I want. They serve beer there, don't they? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna add this one right down to the list. Swiss Chalet. All right. Swiss Chalet, I mean, I get my Michelob Ultra. Hey, I was suggesting go. Crazy Horse Ian. So no, you, you weren't. You were suggesting Central Beer House. It closed a year and a half ago. Yeah, they had a good back. <laughs> yeah, we had to cancel that plan. We'll yeah. Figure that out. If we find a way in, though, I mean, empty spot. Whew. Until it's not. Ian, really appreciate it, man. It's been it's been a blast. Everyone check out the Locked On or said the Locked On. The Locked On NHL podcast meets the Athletic NHL show. Ian, it's been a great time, and we look forward to doing this again down the road. You got it, guys. Have a good one and thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, that's man. Ian Mendez, an absolute legend. And we will be seeing him in Ottawa. Pilsy, some final thoughts for you from that nasty three-nothing loss. Uh, I mean, that was that was a tough game to have such a break in between games, have the excitement of the trade deadline, and you're like, all right, Sens Hockey is back, and it's that's that's the kind of game we get. No goals, uh, not a whole lot of action. Like, how many times did we see the graphic? Zero shots in X amount of minutes. In yeah, the Sens like, went like eight minutes at one point in the third at, period. At one what? point, it was both teams. Went nine oh, minutes yeah. without a shot. Oh, like it no. Was... We let him go without trivia. We kind of got oh, one in the sense yeah. of, did Jacques Martin coach at Civic Center? But yeah. we would have put him on the spot. I don't know. He probably would have had one. This he would have he roasted us anyways on any trivia, Pilsy. If, yeah. if Ross was ah. asking the questions, we would have been screwed. I would have been. Ian, I would have gotten nervous I, there in front of the old legend, Ian Mendez. So. I know. Man, multiple people telling us to come out to Newfoundland. You don't have to tell me twice. We'll meet at Mallard hey. Cottage. I was born the there, boys. There. I was yeah. born out there. That makes oh, yeah. sense. That's awesome. Um, we also got to shout out Dine Sports. I know that uh, oh, Kyle's yeah. been in the chat. Everyone go check out uh, Dine Sports. We were on the podcast with uh, with him this morning. What an absolute beauty uh, he is. So that was a lot of fun. It's been a busy day. I did Locked On NHL show as well today. It's been uh, wild. Got to interview Kyle Connor's mom and his brother as well for something I'm doing with the Jets. And that's the, uh, the next uh, game for the Ottawa Senators. And it'll be a Travis Hamnick debut. So... Perfect timing. Scott White in the chat literally just said, what do people think of Travis Hamannick? Uh, Marshall, first I'll get your overall opinion because you haven't been with us since that trade was made. And then, Pilsy, I want you to start figuring it out in your brain. Where does he fit in to the top six on Thursday? Martian, what would you think of the pickup and your overall impression as well of the trade deadline? Well, it was an exciting deadline. I think, um, you know, Pierre kind of said prior to the deadline that it was going to be a more quiet one. Um, and I thought that it was it was kind of what we kind of expected it to be. You know, there was a few UFAs they needed to get rid of and, and Josh Brown. And I think most of the fan base is probably happy to see him go, not including me, though. I love you, Brownie. Have uh, good luck in Boston. Um, but you then, go. you know, I, I said uh, on the last postcast that what I was hoping that the Sens would do would would be add some young NHL talented players who can jump into the lineup and and probably players who were blocked <clears throat> on better teams. And uh, that's pretty much exactly what ended up happening. You know, we, we, we get um, Matthew Joseph from um, Tampa Bay for Nick Paul. And he's a player who probably is be was being, you know, kind of buried as far as ice time goes on a better Tampa Bay team. And he's going to have a world of opportunity here in Ottawa to kind of prove what he is. So I'm looking forward to seeing more out of him in, in these last 20 games or so here. And then the next one uh, that I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of an intriguing pickup was uh, Zach Sinitian. Yep. And, of course, we get him in the Josh Brown deal. And, you know, he was obviously a terrible draft pick. 
um, when he was picked where he was at 15th overall in that, in that, you know, Shabbat's year where, I mean, he was picked ahead of Shabbat. So what does that tell you? I mean, Ross, and there's, you know, there's, there's, three or four, there, there's three or four guys that are in that draft that, you no, know, I was actually talking to her about that and she was <laughs> laughing her head off. Cal Connor went the pick after yeah, Barzell, Cal Connor, Connor and Barzell. Yeah. And another guy we saw tonight in Barzell. And so. Colin White. Yeah, but I'm I'm still excited to see Shinish, uh, Sinishin come in here and and do you know see what he can do. I know he's going to start off in Belleville and he's got decent AHL numbers, but maybe he's the guy guy who gets like that change of scenery. It's kind of rare, but when it does happen, some kind sometimes guys you know wake up and they realize this is kind of their last chance to like make the NHL, and maybe he's going to do that. So I, I like that pickup too. Our um, boy spoke Z. Boots yeah. on the ground told us he's the fastest man alive. So look out for that as a quality for, for another his. speedster. Yep. Yeah. Another exactly. speedster. So I like the additions of the speed. Um, the Hamannick deal. I'm not super thrilled about as far as giving up a third round pick for him. Um, but again, if he comes in and turns out and, and ends up being, a, you know, someone who can actually play and, uh, you know, play at a level where he's not a liability, then, then that's a stable pick and that's fine. That's a, a stable, you know, acquisition. I mean, and I think fun. it's even a positive acquisition if he helps Belleville any stretch, whether they even make the playoffs. We were talking on Locked On Senators today that it's so tight, and you either there's two teams in the in the North who we have no idea who who are going to get a buy. Or sorry, three teams, but two kind of because we know Utica's first; they're locked yeah. in. But beyond that, you can be second one night and get a buy. Third gets a buy. Fourth and fifth have to play a best of three. And then six is completely out. And right now, nobody knows who's going to be who. It could be any of the teams. So with the divisional lineup, like if you, you can get a little extra scoring, why not go out and, and get a guy who can help? I think he slots in in the top six down there right away. Probably takes a little pressure off of the two young snipers down there too. Because he, as we mentioned, he already goes in. He's leading the team with 19 goals. So, hey, it's, uh, it's a low risk, right? The way Dorian broke it down, and I actually appreciated this from his press conference, he's like, okay, we traded Josh Brown for a fifth, and then Sinitian for a seventh, that if he plays in the NHL, becomes a sixth, and good for him. So I, I thought that was a pretty rationalized uh, way of looking at it, too. Um, but I know, Martian, it's, it's the trade tree effect for you. You've already eaten the Josh Brown apple, so it's just digesting inside of you as Zachary Sinitian. Yeah, so now he's my new guy. He's my guy that I'm going to protect and defend at all costs, okay? So if you come at Zach Sinitian, you're coming at the Martians. So bring it on, you guys, all right? Zach <laughs> Sinitian is a player, all right? Let's go. Let's see uh, it. That's awesome. And he's local, and he's local. Yeah. He is a local, local kid. Apparently he still lives like 10 minutes from the CTC, so away, away he Perfect. goes and, and off and on. Yeah, so um, – We'll end with this. Pilsy, the question I asked, where are you? Not DJ Smith. Where are you putting Travis Hamannick on when on Thursday in Winnipeg? Well, I mean, if it was up to me, I'd probably put him in the press box, uh, see how he likes Winnipeg popcorn and uh, go on from there. But if it's I'm going decent. with what I yeah, if I'm going with what I think the team will do, I have him beside Nick Holden because they didn't bring him in to be a scrub. They brought him in thinking he's going to be a top four. They even talked about him, him possibly playing with Shabbat. So that goes to show where they think he's going to be. And they pegged him as Sanderson's partner in the future. So they obviously have high hopes for him. And I think they're, they must be seeing the way Nikita Zaitsev has been playing now. And they must be thinking we got to get him farther down the lineup. So if you have a new shutdown pair of Holden and Travis Hamannick, that's probably how they're going to go here. And, I think you keep Randy with Zub and Mete. Obviously, he's he's the guy that's going to stay on that bottom pair. So I would say you're going to see Brandy Zub, Holden Hamannick, and Mete Zaitsev. Mete Zaitsev. I do that's not. That's terrible, like, eh? I know. I, do, I don't like the the Mete Zaitsev. For, so I'll bring my that. gear. I'll bring my men's league player equipment to, to yeah, the ring. Well, well f for that reason, I'm going to say that you put Hamannick with, with MDZ. Whoa, what do you think of that? that? Oh, and take and yeah, Mete out? Down. I don't mind that. Okay. You could honestly probably convince me that that's a solid top four pair in 2014. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say there's something missing there. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think that that's probably the most stable you can make that that group of guys is, you know, you, you hope that there's some sort of synergy between them. I know one of them is going to have to play the, the wrong side, if I'm not mistaken there, I think. 
Hamannick is also a right. Usually, I think MDZ prefers the right as well, right? Yeah, but he's left shot, so he's I'm sure. He can okay, so he can. He's he playing can NHL that. minutes, baby. He can play. You know He'll play wherever you want. And, yeah. and he's free now, so you can't throw him up in the press box now. Let's go get him in the lineup, pump him up. He's motivated. He wants to get traded probably at this point, right? So I'm pretty gonna... sure Sinitian, if we had a trending thing, would, this is a hilarious in the chat. We got everyone keep it up. What's going on in there? <laughs> Sinitian is just like an all-time favorite. Everyone's everyone's fired up for him, Martian. They're eating the apples. Effing right. That's awesome. <laughs> That's good. I, my buddy Spokes Z will be happy to see that. So. Oh, he's, he's front and center, man. He's loving it. We got to ask him. <laughs> yeah. Is it Z or Z? I mean, he's probably he's, oh, he's, a Z, I guess. he's American though, right? Yeah, he's so. a Z. He's a Z guy. Spoke Z we'll sounds so much better. I think next time they play the Burns, we'll have to get him on for a postcast. I think that guy yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because sure. they're done with the Wild too, aren't they? They gotta know. be. They play. Them they twice. Play he's them twice, he's yeah. double dipping. Eh? He's got an East and a West team. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I gotta ask questions. We got the Sens, and then every single of the fifty players who used to play there. Hashtag Sens abroad. Yeah. yeah, we cheer for the Sons Abroad. That's what we do. At Boston, April 14th. See you then, Spokes Z. Uh, right. Also, speaking of see you then, let's finish off the show with a little PSA. Yes, yes. The boys are getting together. April 23rd, we teased it a little bit with Ian Mendez, who will be making an appearance, I'm sure. What an absolute beauty. So, Zed guys are commies. That's hilarious. All right. Um, so, April 23rd in Ottawa, Montreal. It's Pilsy's revenge game for having oh to be at the Bell Center. For that 5-1 loss. We're going to plan something. We put out a tweet. Hit us up on the on the replies in the tweet. The Ottawa Senators ticket staff has been awesome. They're trying to figure out a way to make sure that we can either be all in the same section. We'll, we'll figure it out. But we got the ball rolling. As I told you, and we're in the Jacques Martin, leaving the Civic Center. So we're, we're getting closer, but we're not quite there. But we're hoping by April 1st we'll announce it. And of course, our boy Stewie who's in the chat tonight. You Guess might remember it. I almost want to say if you're an OG listener, but that was like three years into it. But when we hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, we said we'd treat one of the listeners to a game. So of course he is the guest. I almost said maid of honor. Sorry, Stewie, the guest <laughs> of honor in uh, in the game. Pilsy, this will be a fun one too because it's our first visit to the CTC since opening night. A huge win. We've seen two games at the CTC together, right? The other one was a four-one yes. win against the Rangers. Yeah, and just to, just to clarify, so you guys all know, the plan is, and just the plan is, we're going to go somewhere to all meet before the game, have a good time, have some drinks, have some food, have some laughs, all meet up, and then we'll all go to the game together, and the Senators ticket staff have organized a way that we can all get tickets in the same section. So if you guys are interested in both the pregame meetup and purchasing tickets in the same section so we can all get rowdy together at the game, let us know, and we're going to be planning that, and we'll let you know when things are confirmed and how you can join. Yeah, super fun. Marsh, you looking forward to it? Yeah, I, I want to know what kind of animals we have here. Like, what kind of guys are in the chat? What kind of guys are on Twitter? I want to meet I want to meet people. I, I've had great experiences so far, and I've only been you know part of this community, I really feel like, for the last two years. And every person so far that I've met has, has exceeded my expectations as far as, like, you know – just the personalities and their eagerness to talk about the Sens. And I really have no fans who are Sens fans in my, in my life who are like my friends who I can talk about it with. So it's really whoa, great. Oh, hey. Whoa. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, you we had a nice conference call today. <laughs> Come on, pal. You guys were, uh, you know, you were my first kind of internet friends, right? So I include you guys in that group. People How funny. Can, can we quickly tell a story? Because, I mean, the numbers are dying down. Shout out Ian Mendez, but we appreciate everyone coming. I feel like the people who are left would appreciate a funny story. The first time, when was the first time we ever met in person? I know person? the answer to this. How come I can't remember? Wasn't it on our double date? It was the Nodak so, five oh, overtimes no. night. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Actually, yeah. it was. We did. So a double we, date. we we made our girlfriends go meet our internet friends with us. Oh my god! Yeah, and then they're just like, oh, oh we're just gonna watch a quick crazy. hockey game after. <laughs> yeah, sonk five overtime periods think, later. Well, the first time me and Ross ever actually spoke was on the post or on the podcast. I was on the like, podcast, you were one of our first Sen Central citizens. I was a yeah. Sen Central citizen. So, so we, yeah. and then we go to town right off of Elgin Street, and yeah, our poor girlfriends probably thought we we're the weirdest dudes all time. Yeah, they just got They're stuck there listening to us chat about the Sens all night. It's pretty funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, that that was awesome. Hey, it, it worked out well. It's been a blast getting to know you. And last time we went out for beers without them, so it's not like we need our. Uh, 
you know, our arm oh. arm candy to uh, to go out and have a good time. What well, breakfast is the bar? It's they, like yeah, literally across the street. Excuse to leave, really. So like, <laughs> something happened. Was like, yeah, just just like, do something. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a great time, and we're looking forward to more great times at the end of the season. I'm probably gonna go to all three that week. We're gonna bring mom and dad to one as well. They're gonna be in town, so uh, looking forward to all that. But for tonight, we should say goodbye. This was an extra long postcast. We had a fantastic time, dude. How about Ian Mendez just jumping on with the that's fellas, it. like? What a legend. You can't say much more about that guy, eh? I don't know how anyone can say a bad word about this guy. Oh, since we're at the very, very end, can yeah. I just tell my scoop again, just on this platform? Yeah, yeah, you should, you should, yeah. Okay, so... It's out there. I, I'm pretty... No, I'm 100%. I stand by it. It was boots on the ground. That's all I'm going to say. Boots on the ground. Pierre Maguire is behind... The Travis Hammond, for better or worse, man, we are we all said we're giving tra- – everyone took it as though I'm just roasting him. If he's good, I think this is actually kind of makes sense. But we'll see. Travis Hammond, they hopefully want to keep him past next year. And will he be making three or will he be making $1 million? I don't know. But they hope that this is a long-term solution. And they want him to be the mentor for Tyler Clevin. If he plays well, I could see it. But – and I spoke to the guy who covers the Islanders, um, Gil Martin, Locked On Islanders. Pilsy, he said that he's interacted with him. He wrote stories on Hamnick. And back then he was like a really, he said he's a really good dude. And he could see him being a mentor in that role. So there's multiple opinions just because the loudest ones have been negative. And I mean, we've been fairly negative about the move as well. And but we're I the feel same like, pe- Ross, we've been more negative about the trade. We haven't really got into his personality other than just rumors of right. other people saying it. Like, we haven't attacked this guy. We want him to do well here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 100%. I hope he kills I just, it. Yeah. I just wonder, like, wh- why would the team decide to to bring in, uh, like, a kind of a, an asset like this who you have to pay for that you probably could have got for free that is this, like, you know, defenseman who's seen as, like, a weaker defenseman in the league to mentor a guy who's not going to be maybe in the NHL for another possibly like probably two years, yeah. right? Like before he ends up making it. Like that's why they're maybe, standing maybe, like, in Martian. <laughs> hey, listen, I have no doubts that maybe Hamannick, he's, he's going to mentor him in Belleville. Well, listen, like Hamannick, you know, yeah, maybe it's there, but uh, Hamannick could impart tons of wisdom on Tyler Clevin. Don't get me wrong; I'm experience. sure that you know he's got tons of NHL experience. There's shit that he could tell Clevin that would help him out. His but, next game is his 700th in his career. That's quite a few games in the NHL. That's a great amount of games. But also, you could also bring in a guy who's like a former defenseman who's a coach who could teach him all these different things and not be an anchor on the defense or or even like a contract that goes against the salary cap. You know, like bring in a guy like Mathot. You, you get him Mathot in there to, you know, he could talk to Tyler Clevin and, and give him just as good advice and also not not be on the payroll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, would I mean, be, but less Mark so. Mathot sounds like he he didn't say anything of what he heard, but you could just tell. And and I think it was uh, Devin saying that, like, he didn't say anything and you didn't expect him to, but he, he looked like he had heard some some shit. So anyways, that's neither here nor there, but uh, I can confirm that the Vancouver Canucks were extremely happy to get rid of him. They were shocked at the price of offloading him. They thought they were going to have to attach an asset and their players were very happy that he was no longer in the locker room. And maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's something. Time will tell. That's yeah. the beauty of this. It's all going to play out. And like the GM said, judge us at training camp. Thank God we're not judging them after tonight's game, a three, nothing loss to the New York Islanders in a suffocating defeat that reminded me of Guy Boucher hockey, but it was yeah. a lot more fun to watch when your team's up a goal than when they're down one and then ultimately two and ultimately three, nothing. We love how passionate Sens fans are. Look at everyone still active in the chat. That's what Zach Sanishin does to this team is what we're going with. But for tonight, we should say goodbye for at Laleem's Martian and at Brandon Pillar One. Thanks so much to everyone for being in the chat. We'll chat tomorrow on the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan. Have a great night, everyone, and go Sens. Go.